Hello, baby. Guys, lads, yes. you're talking to a survivor. A survivor, you I survived say? something horrible this morning. Wait, look, can I guess what it was? Sure. Was there, was there a fire? Actually, my whole house burned down, yeah. Oh I my lost, god. I lost everything. E- um, everything just gone. Yeah, it's all gone. I'm actually just, rec- I, you know, I'm just in the public library right now. This is our recording. That's what how dedicated we are to everyone. No. So, um. <laughs> Wait, hold know. on. You're not, Wait, you're not supposed to talk this. I mean, are you in like one of those like enclosed, you know, booths? No, things? I'm fully out in the open. <laughs> There's a, they have there's like a guy a, they next have like to me. He's, he's looking at fucking porno. What kind of porn is it? Uh, it's like um, it's like uh, Homer Simpson stuff. Wait, okay, hold on. So specifically, it's it's porn of Homer. It's not like one of those yeah. like large hot wife stuff. No, no it's, it's like Homer. It's like Homer. And he's, and he, he's like he has a donut, and you can imagine what he's doing with that damn donut. M- Marge. It's pro- he's probably saying that. <laughs> um, Eat I mean, the donut out of my ass. That's what, yeah, exactly. But dad, a vegetarian. <laughs> oh, no. That's Ted bad. Cruz. Uh, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz it's incest a Simpson porn lover. He probably, you know, allegedly, <laughs> who, who could say? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Allegedly. No, but that's, uh, none of that stuff is damn true. Any of that stuff that we just said. Um, but oh, what man. is true? Uh, I survived a horrible accident this morning. I have uh, a tin of Altoids, and okay. I woke up, and my uh, I was really tired. I, folks, I was tired, but my 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 breath. I was like, ooh, I kind of I kind of I need to I need to do something about this. So I grabbed one of those Altoids. I almost choked and died on it. <laughs> I was lying down. It slid down my throat. I was like, I for a second, I was like, this is gonna be it. This is gonna be the most embarrassing way to go. Choking yeah. on, an, on a damn Altoid, um, but but anyway, I'm here. I survived the traumatic incident. I don't have to be Congrats. in a public library. I don't have to be in heaven or hell. I mean, who knows? <laughs> you don't have to be. I don't have to be. I can be here okay. actually. Okay. So what are yeah. you gonna do? I mean, what, what, what? So you lost everything. You lost your clothes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was after I choked on the uh, Altoid. Um, well, I guess you know maybe. Something we will get into in a couple minutes of this episode <laughs> um, of what oh, if you lost everything? I thought that's what you were doing. I thought you were going to be like, no, Guys, that's I not what one. I was. I was oh, talking okay. about the uh, the the thing was the Altoid thing, but hey, I didn't even think about that. Oh, I thought I thought it was one of those like because on MFA. By the way, yeah. guys, what's up? It's Style Direction Mental oh, Podcast. Style. No stuff is here. I'm, I'm Ethan. I'm Spencer. And I'm MJ. And on MFA, occasionally there's like, guys, I lost my entire wardrobe. How do I build it back? Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm gonna look it up verbatim. Uh, lost all my clothes in a fire. Male fashion. Oh man, here we go. I'm just gonna go on I, MFA and sort by February 18. February 18, 2000, and what's eight years ago? Oh shit. 2015. Uh, 2015. Wow. I lost all my clothes in a fire and I just got my insurance check. How can I build an effective and fashionable wardrobe for relatively inexpensively? Wait, can I not start oh, by it's controversial? A real post. I don't know if we have that uh, ability. What the I hell? honestly that's, have that's no sensitive. fashion sense whatsoever. So I'm trying to buy a combination of clothes to build a stylish mix and match wardrobe that is stylish. <laughs> Wait, you said you said it twice. He said he said it twice. And, Oh, and I thought he said appropriate for a twenty-something college student that will make me I, look sharp. I thought he said styleless, and then stylish in the same I want to be. I want to be your most swagless guy, homie. Man, Stan <laughs> Smith. That's like one thing I I actually had that I just never really wore because yeah. it's like by the time I actually got them, I had, I already realized this is not the shoe I. You're not going to be. You're not going to be the basic bastard. Yeah. Did, Why did you move on to the kill shots and the? In the converse. Well, I already? think I bought yeah, I bought Stan Smiths, but then I realized I didn't like how they looked. Like, like they're too fat. Like they're just 
I, I don't like, yeah, I don't like leather shaming. sneakers. Like, you know, I, I have the kill shots, well, which I never wear. Um, I feel like, yeah, I, when, when it comes to, when it comes to sneakers, I just kind of like the canvas lake deck shoes, basically. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't or, mind a yeah, leather sneaker. Like 70s I, ones. I like the look of them. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't wear them. I think, yeah, profile wise, you know, I and like hey, we'll get into how aesthetics plays into, or, or design plays into how you I've, build this wardrobe. I've also played tennis with my Sam Smiths, so... Do you want to see I, the I, most... I use them for the real, <laughs> the real usage. Do you want to see the you, most you controversial run. post yeah. in the history of MFA? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to send it to our chat, and I think we could just do, we could just do a little react. I almost sent that picture of Frasier in a leather jacket again. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of funny if that was the most controversial one. This is it. Wait, can you, can you send the link to this, please? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. What is it? Has, God, this is awful. Yeah. Um, it's fun stuff. Oh, I remember what's the Robert closest, Geller. What's the closest you've ever come to uh, dying? Um, two two budgets and what luck. Last the the last time we went to Inspiration. Oh no, the first time oh, I went man. to Inspiration. I guess. Yeah. Wow. Um, time flies when ago. you're having fun. Yeah, ten years ago, the the car accident. Oh yeah, that time. Uh, yeah, that was that was five years ago. There's a lot of like four four years ago. Four years ago. I think it was a hundred years ago. It was like one yeah, of the first car though. accidents that anyone had ever gotten into. And uh, someone filmed it, and it was like coming at the camera, and they're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> exactly. One of yeah. the car accidents of all time. When are they gonna do a fucking a remake of that? They should. I you know. <laughs> Someone talk about the reboot. Yeah, his I'm, son says, "I want to freak. I'm a train. I want to freak out people." Yeah, and dad's like, "You can never do this, son." We're gonna do. I'm gonna bring back. It's gonna be the Lumiere c- cinematic universe. Or sorry, the is that? Yeah, I think it's the Lumiere brothers. Yeah, it's gonna be the Lumiere cinematic universe. We're gonna have them. We're gonna have the, all the factory workers. Maybe they're getting on the train. You know? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like not like getting off the train. Ex- well, no, the factory workers they walk to the train. And the train comes to the station, and they're like, "Holy shit!" Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna hit us, and it yeah, does. Like, and yeah. in my cinematic universe, <laughs> kills the, tra- them. the train does kill everyone that watches the movie. I mean, that's that way, it's kind of like it's kind of like train arriving at the station mixed with the ring. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of the ring girl again? Uh, uh, she ring, had a name. Ringo. That's oh, the, it's, gonna, it's that. Beyonce. The Japanese name? Yeah, she has a is name. It, is it Sadako? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a trivia question. And you oh, were okay. like, oh my god, it's Ring. Or did you, the did ring. you win? Yeah. I also do like this. I'm just looking at the controversial <laughs> posts on MFA. Um, th- there was one that was just like a picture of a belt. And it's just like, I bought this belt 12 years ago for $100. And I wear it every day. And then that was it. End of post. <laughs> yeah, that was, it's pretty good. Um, Man, MFA. You, MFA we should, is. We should we do should, a bonus yeah, we episode go. where we just scroll through the most controversial posts. Because yeah. some of these are pretty funny. Yeah, now that we don't stream, we should just do that for bonus stuff, you know? Yeah, but Do our streams, but but our, but they're bonus. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of MFA, we're talking about the foundational wardrobe. Well, actually, no. We like the foundational wardrobe. We like we, it. But we're not really with, like, the basic essential wardrobe or the capsule wardrobe. Capsule? Capsule. capsule. That I sounds know. like a Star capsule. Wars name. Yeah, yeah Capsule. <laughs> What, what do you think Hello, is Hello, my friends. Be? I feel he's I, a space. Pi- he's a space. Well, I mean, who isn't a pop fucking pirate in Star Wars? Yeah, I say, is it related to Hondo? I haven't. I haven't watched any of the yeah. like fucking Hondo Naka. Clone Wars stuff. I haven't caught up really since like season oh, two man. of Mandalorian. Maybe. I, so now, now, anytime there's like a Star Wars announcement, and it's like D- Dave. What's the what's the, the guy's last name? Dave something. Filoni. Fioron. Filoni. Fioroni is he? Yeah, Fioroni, Dave Filoni. Anytime he announces he's doing a new show, and there's like a million characters in it that are apparently all from the goddamn cartoons, and I don't recognize a single one of them. Like I keep, I saw a bunch of photos yesterday, and I'm like, oh, are these all new characters? They're all from the cartoons, folks. Yeah, it's it's Thrawn, a damn cartoon. Sabine. Well, I knew about Thrawn. Also, Thrawn's not from the cartoons. He's just from the EU. He's from the EU. 
from Europe. <laughs> he's European. P-U. <laughs> the P- yeah, he smells bad. Yeah, Thrawn probably does smell bad. You don't know what a fucking alien smells like. Yeah, the chiss. More like yeah. more like the bitch. That's more right. Like yeah. <laughs> you think you think Darth Vader ever said that to him? I think Darth Vader probably said that a hundred times. Chiss, the... more like bitch. Am I right? Yeah, that's the first <laughs> thing he he said when he found out that he was he was chiss. They that's should make not... all chiss people sound like they're from Sweden because they're all wait. Are what's Mikkelsen? Is that Swedish? Yeah, he's Swedish. Well, it's okay. like how they. It's like how in um, Wonder Woman, how all the 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 ladies from Wonder Woman Island. Um, oh, they all have an Israeli accent. They all sound Israeli because that's how what Gal Gadot sounds like. Yeah, that's a retcon everything just, yeah. to, just for her. Uh, you know. uh, anyway, we're talking about the capsule wardrobe. Capsule. Capsule. Uh, right. that, yeah, yeah right that's that gotta down. be a character. Yeah. Um, we're talking about the foundational wardrobe, but what I want to know. Right. What are the foundations of a highly successful startup? Um, wearing hoodies. Okay. Uh, always be, uh, always be always selling. Be closing. Did you see the Did you see the photo of um, uh, Mr. Beast, um, no. Sir Beast at, <laughs> at teaching a business class at like at like Harvard? No, I didn't what? Know he did that. Yeah, it was funny. Like on the board, he just had written down like create content, like st- start network. It's like views <laughs> equal profits and shit like that. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Well, I can't. I can't officially comment on. Uh... Oh, on yeah. Just but uh, but that's Mr. That's, that's Mr. Beast stuff. is your brother-in-law. Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife's his last name is Beast. <laughs> yeah. Isabel Beast. Isabel Beast. Isabel Beast. That's like pretty question. good. Yeah. <laughs> Foundational wardrobe. Okay. So, as I alluded to, I mean, uh, earlier, I mean, actually, people don't, people don't need fires to, to do <laughs> this wardrobe. <laughs> no. I mean, hey, I mean, what, how, what, okay. you, my you, biggest you, thing, beep, 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 beep. That was turning off my fan. I didn't know if anyone could hear it. I don't think I did, but that's okay. fine. Um, people love basic wardrobes. Uh-huh. It's almost as if people are like, here's something I can't fathom. Is everyone a fucking beginner? Like, well, I is think, that okay? I, I think it might also just be kind of like the bias from where are you going? Because if you go on Reddit, the, the hub of, you know, engineers and comp sci, STEM people, whatever. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna want everyone that's like the they, they, they want the most like optimized you know like the the yeah basic bastard like capsule wardrobe. Um, no, but it's like, I mean, is the internet just full of beginners? Which I guess makes sense, uh-huh. kind of. Like, if you're the internet is is it's it's an information place. So if you're, you know, searching or if you're on it, you're probably looking for something, and therefore you know the propensity for a user to be a beginner is higher. I just feel like there's just so much of it. And this is not, this like not about more... beginners, but I'm like, this might be why so much content is based around like this basic or capsule wardrobe. Well, I think there's just more money and like lowest common denominator stuff, you know, like that's why um, every like YouTube menswear thing is like um, just, you know, the, the top 10 basics for like spring. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, isn't it weird though that like, I thought we solved this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, yeah. like, why does why does every creator ne- feel the need? And I guess we're doing our own version of it with this episode. But, like, why does every creator feel the need to do this? Like, I thought, like, I get it. It's like it's the whole ca- like ent- entrepreneurial of like, well, I I haven't said it, so I'm gonna do mm-hmm. my version. But everything's the same, and Everything I feel like we've same. solved. I feel like we've solved this shit. Like, I don't need yet another video of like selvage jeans you know what i'm saying guys like introduction like, oh, to bio chinos white. yeah yeah oh get a khaki pair of chinos and then get some blue jeans and then mix and match i can't wear two Break pants up. at once that's awful advice <laughs> no one goes on top one, the other goes on the <laughs> actually we should start that that could be like the the next thing i'm i'm two pants in it two pants <laughs> it's I'm like two the opposite it's the opposite of winnie the pooh <laughs> I think you're I'll... non-poo. You're non-pooing it. I'm, not, I'm non-pooing it. Rever- I got, I got complete. Poo. 
Yeah, uh, Rev Poo. Rev Poo? Oh, I thought that yeah. was Rev Poo. Yeah, I'm a reverse poo. <laughs> <laughs> reverse poo? <laughs> Someone wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about this because I don't, I don't like this. I, I don't like this advice. Um, clothing is not something I think that you should be a hot take. I feel like starting out with the basics is like almost guaranteed to make you waste money. Well, I think, and I think maybe that's something. Uh, yeah. Well, I Go think ahead. that's something that like, um, and we're going to, we're going to talk about uh, an article from Derek Guy in a little bit, but I think something that he's talked a lot about on Twitter recently, which I agree with is that um, you should really have like some sort of like emotional connection with your clothes. Like that's how you get something that you're going to be wearing that you're going to want to wear for like 10 years um, rather yeah. than going on the internet and being like, okay, well, if I want to be fashionable, then I suppose I should go, you know, buy a blue, a light blue OCBD or something. And you just get it because some guy tells you to get it. It's, you know, if you, if you get something that uh, you feel like happy, like you want to wear, like you get excited when you put it on, then that's yeah. going to be something that um, I think like, just like you, you're going to wear better because it's going to feel more natural. Um, mm -hmm. and then you're just going to want to wear forever. <laughs> That's true. You know, in that one with the guy with the fire, I was actually surprised that one of the highest comments did say, do not buy everything all at once, which I mm -hmm. think is really good advice. I think that's, I think that's kind of like the caveat to a lot of this is that there's this assumption that, oh, if I just buy all of this right now, I'll never have to buy any other clothes and mm -hmm. it'll be fine. But yeah, I think the good thing is in order to give yourself room for experimentation is like, you're supposed to you know, acquire like one at, or, you know, a couple pieces at a time. Yeah. Um, and then, and then hopefully leave yourself room to grow. Um, but I have a definition. I mean, so we're, we're kind of, there's a lot of terms here. I think basic wardrobe is kind of like, you know, meant to be basic itself. Uh -huh. Like it's, it's meant to get you through a lot. Of, I guess it's the same thing as cap capsule. I think is, is more of like, Oh, it's minimal, but basic wardrobe could mean you have a lot of just basics. Like you're not like 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 the like the basic bastard. You can have a lot of those. You could have a lot mm -hmm. of like oatmeal colored sweaters and chinos. But a capsule one is like okay, you have one jean with one chino, and you know, and then you mix and match that way. Uh, because I have a definition here, which is what is a capsule wardrobe? A capsule wardrobe is a wardrobe that is designed to minimize the amount of clothes you wear. While simultaneously maximizing the number of outfits you can wear with them, literally min max, literally okay. in the definition, uh, with the perfect capsule wardrobe, you should be able to get dressed in the dark, and everything should look coordinated when you turn on the lights. Depending on your needs, it could consist of as few as of seven pieces or so. At minimum, you need a shirt, a sweater, some pants, a jacket, some shoes for a total of five pieces. And as you know, this configuration is very limiting. You have to do laundry all the time. And what on earth are you going to wear while you're washing your one pair of pants? What Cole the hell are you going to wear? I'm probably going to be... Well, that's when like, you're not going to be reverse poo. You're just going to be regular. <laughs> regular, poo. regular poo. The capsule wardrobe I, I will show is more reasonable. It has 19 active pieces mm -hmm. with five on-season pieces and five off-season pieces. This means that the wardrobe will have 24 pieces active at any point in the year. Uh, crazy. Yeah, uh, that's too much math. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I know maybe we'll do a future episode on like cost per wear. I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit about that in this one as well. Because I mean, there's like I know that there's the, like people have apps and shit like that where they, I mean, I used to like kind of do this where I would like write down the, the the like suits and jackets that I had. I don't do this anymore. Um, oh, but, I remember you. I remember that. Like, yeah, I just on. had a list. Um, I had a list. But, uh, but like, no, I see people that have like spreadsheets and apps and stuff like that, where they put together their, their like wardrobe and, and yeah. they can <laughs> wardrobe like, roulette. Yeah. Or they can like, you know, like, uh, put, put together photos of outfits and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know, like that maybe that's like just a digital version of me, like putting two people, like, you know, two things together on my bed before I try it on. But it yeah, seems like say, a lot of work. Like, it's just a, it's like weird to turn it into like a formula. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I what mean, was the Alpha M formula that he had? Oh, he on had Shark the tank. Yeah, where it was like, if you have all these pieces, you're gonna need. It's like a black shirt is like three points or something. Yeah. Um, 
But, you know, I think that people really find appeal in that whole, like, algorithm. I mean, people love it. People love algorithms. People love computers. I mean, they, they just want to feel... I don't want to feel like I don't want to feel like I'm like bagging too much on on the regular guy here, but like you know I <laughs> the common I man. get the, I we're, hey, we're we're stone cold elitists over here. Yeah, we had a whole episode about how we're we're elitists. Um, but yeah, people people love it. People lo- want that basic wardrobe because it's like okay now okay I'm about I'm about to switch to being mean again. Um, but it's like. <laughs> I got so I got too much brain power, or I don't have enough mm-hmm. brain power, right? <laughs> like, well, it's like I don't know. Everyone, like a, a lot of um, like business talk and like hustle shit is is basically like you know framing yourself as like a machine or a computer or something like that. Right. And so pe- I think people like to think it's like oh I'm being you know yeah so logical and I'm thinking in in such a like you know like I'm thinking like a computer or whatever. Um, and I think that's just, you know, that's, that's like the number one piece of technology of our time. Uh, so I think people are maybe kind of framing their actions, like, in, in, like, you know, it's influencing people's thoughts. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like the whole idea of like min maxing, mm-hmm. um, getting dressed in the dark is kind of a weird concept to me. It's like, why would you want to do that? Like, yeah. it's not like, do people do this with anything else? I mean, like, I guess, I mean... I it's yeah because it is weird that it's like i guess it's like you know people just real think it's like i have to be presentable but i don't actually want to put any effort into doing that um and so uh it's just kind of this it's just kind of this weird imbalance um imagine if you did with like language you know it's like here's yeah. like the the 20 words you'll need to use every day so let's just that way you don't deviate well from... they have like word, word a day calendars maybe but you know but that's I guess like... the, the point the point is not to you only use that word although maybe that would be kind of a fun calendar i would say it's immensely <laughs> what, what does aaron say when she says <laughs> in the office um it's see, the, but the word immensely. of the day thing is cool because it's like oh here's a new thing so technically it would be like oh if you we're like, hey, wear this kimono, and like, okay, I gotta challenge myself in my everyday. So, are you saying that that's something that we should market? The style of direct, the sty- style of direction. <laughs> Hold on, how about the direction of style daily calendar? There you go. And then, and we give just a one word. This is what you should dress like today. I mean, is I mean, on that note, like that only works for beginners, right? It's assuming you don't already have a jungle jacket or like a fucking spear point collar. You know what I mean? Well, I was like, going to say it doesn't work for beginners because we're going to assume that they, they have a, a lot and they're able to, you know, take more like esoteric or like vague uh, descriptions we, rather than like wear a blue coat. Yeah. I mean, but we don't even do anything that's esoteric. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm just, I'm just like not esoteric. I'm just saying it's like, you know, rather than just saying it's like, you know, like wear something nice and summery. We'd be like, I don't know, like dress like a like oh 19, oh a challenge like, like a nineteen sixties like airplane mechanic or something. I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna mad lib or give them props yeah. like improv. Yeah, exactly. I, I I do feel like our style is improvisation a little bit like like yeah the it's prompt improv. of like yes yeah, and everything is everything is improv. Um, but but yeah, I mean improv it's everywhere. Like, <laughs> improv all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these things are, they're minimal by definition. It's like. And a lot of it is meant to be, like, super agnostic, right? Like, mm-hmm. these basic wardrobes are meant to, like, it's, like, blend in, but also, like, look good. I know we've talked about a little bit before about, like, people want, like, the social accolades of, like, looking really good, but then with, like, the least amount of effort ever. They don't want, they don't want to draw too much attention to themselves. They just don't, they don't want anyone to think that they look, like, bad or that they don't look, like, put together. But is... they don't also want anyone to really think that hard about their style. Yeah, is this might be a little philosophical like we normally do, but is looking good a personality? You know, like is that no, right? Like that's not. I don't think so. I don't think it is. No. Yeah, because it's like I mean, personality is like I mean, maybe personality is the wrong word because personality is like emotions and stuff. But like, well, it's it's what makes you a person, <laughs> which is um emotions, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you think about expressiveness, right? Like, um, in our previous episode, it's your clothes need to say something and i don't mm-hmm. know if like like looking good can say something but i don't think that that's like no, that i mean can't yeah, be the, the only thing right like, like the basic bastard doesn't really tell me anything about you except mm-hmm. like you know maybe you're wearing you work a in white IT. t-shirt and yeah. khaki shorts and white sneakers <laughs> exactly yeah i mean it says that you're it's like i you love prob- that you probably carry around a pocket knife or something 
MJ MJ has entered the chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's kind of funny. I mean, like I like that about MJ. You know, he's got the he's got like the multi tool with him, but like he doesn't. I mean, dress dude, I have the way. I have like a little mini can opener on my keys. I I I, uh, I used you know what's to on have... my keys. What? Uh, Lego Luke Skywalker in the X wing. Yeah. What, what can he? What can, what he, can he do, do? for me? I mean, he could like you know yeah, blue leader, by the way. destroy uh, AT AT or something. Oh yeah, oh, that's Death true. Yeah. he destroys a lot of things actually. Well, Luke, uh, hey, is Luke was... Skywalker the bad guy? <laughs> he destroys so much. Is that, is that a Star Wars uh, theory? If it was an AT-AT, AT, he'd have the puffer thing, which he doesn't have. Because remember, mm. the X-Wing one is just normal. But on the Snowspeeder, he has like a weird like neck puffer. That's right. Yeah. He maybe, well, you know, he took it off because it got too warm inside the Tauntaun. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, too much yeah. innards. As a kid, yeah. that, that grossed me out. Um, I actually yeah, thought it mean, looked so cozy. Just kidding. I thought it was all, it's pretty all gross. The, all the, the, the like balloons yeah, thing that they have inside of them. I remember like watching like behind the scenes of like how they made it. Like they would, they like they, they cut. Well, it they just got they a just... real tauntaun, didn't they? <laughs> oh the yeah. Planet Hoth. Yeah. Yeah. And they have like I'm a tauntaun. They actually speak English. That's the fucked <laughs> yeah. up thing. <laughs> I feel like that's a robot chicken sketch. I feel like that's a totally. Uh, we, we we should we should get Seth Green on the phone and say it's like, listen, are you still doing robot chicken? Because we have we have some ideas. I'm doing the improv a talking phone talking. Now. Yeah, we have ideas that we stole. That's, from a, you that's not an improv phone. A, sorry, yeah, I'm doing a fake improv phone. This <laughs> yeah, is what an is this? Phone. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in Shakalaka? <laughs> yeah, you're only gonna eat. So from context clues, you guys can guess what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole MFA is like built on this idea of like, you know, like this basic wardrobe. Um, and it's like meant to also be like trend resistant too, kind mm-hmm. of like there's this timeless aspect because it's like, even though people say don't bite all at once, there is this idea that you're supposed to just stick with this for as long as possible. Yeah. Like it's supposed well, to be and to do that. You can't be into trends. These pieces have to be quote timeless well because that's Um, that's the issue yeah that's the issue if your entire goal is to just like quote unquote like be like fashionable or whatever or be yeah wear things that are like in style um rather than what you like is it's like that's going to be a pretty you're not going to get like much return on your investment like you're gonna you're gonna buy something and then in like two years it's going to look slightly dated and you're going to be like well fuck like what am i going to do now um yeah and that's why we're i mean you see it like all the time on mfa now we're like Guys will be like, "What the hell? Like, I bought it's all these literally the culture pants. war right now yeah, happening." It's like I bought these slim fit pants like four years ago, and all of a sudden these like kids are wearing like wide pants. What the hell's going on over here? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, I I don't know. It just that that's why, that's why I'm I'm pretty content over here in in my little world like wearing like looking dated. Yeah, <laughs> intentionally, exactly. Like, intentionally I don't dated. care. Like I don't like I don't. I'm I'm not trying to be like I'm not trying to be like cool and edgy or whatever. Like, I pay attention to, like, you know, like, modern fashion trends, but, like, I don't, like, care that much. Right. Like, it's not going it, to, like, if there's something that's, like, in that is cool, then, like, I'll pick it up. But um, if something I'm wearing is considered, like, not trendy or whatever, I don't, I just don't care because I like it. Yeah. Well, that that's, like, a, it's kind of related to what, um, what Derek talks about, right? The springboard mm-hmm. wardrobe, where, like, it's supposed to give you that room for... Or upgrading a little bit like he does say that's intentionally not meant to be forever and i think it's hard it's hard in general like even though we're bagging on basic people i think we also know that we don't have the same wardrobe we had five years ago yeah i mean i might because i already i went through this at that stage five years ago and then now largely outside of not being able to physically fit into stuff mm-hmm. the styling is, is still pretty much the same um Actually, what what is five? Maybe it's more like no, it's five years ago. That's like twenty eighteen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Derek Springboard Roadrobe, right? Like it's supposed to be improvement. It's it's meant to like kind of it's meant to be basic, but like a, like add stuff for personality, right? Like if you have a nice blue jean and a chambray shirt, mm-hmm. you can easily slot in like a crazy like like a like a southwestern cardigan from Double RL, and like it'll yeah. fit in seamlessly. You can also buy like a leather jacket, like. That's the springboard, the springboard wardrobe. You could get like a big um, Arby's cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he says here the ideal is to build a baseline that can play around with different looks when you acquire something new. Mm-hmm. I like how he likens this to to fountain pens, which is something I don't have any experience with, and I know that there's a couple of hobbyist fountain pen people in our Discord. I don't. Yeah, 
I try. I, I mean, I have like a couple. I tried to get into it because I'm like, I, I do carry a notebook. Oh, I, like, Jay, write... Jay's into it, right? Jay's yeah, really I think a little it. bit. But the okay. issue is, uh, it's just a lot of work. It is just like a lot of work. Um, and my hands always got covered in ink and stuff like that. And uh, I got tired of having to clean and refill them every couple weeks. <laughs> and yeah. so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stick with these little ball points. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Spencer's I, recommendation can't go wrong. Skillcraft. Yeah, yeah. the skillcraft. They're the best ones. I like how we all Love have it. them immediately in our vicinity. To well, we're, we're, presumably we're recording at our desk, and our exactly. you know why, why would I don't have one? No, I do have one within arms arms reach. Here we go. Found it. Yeah. You can't yeah, see it in my yeah, green screen. Good, but... Yeah, it's an invisible um, pen. But here, I want to go through what Derek says is the springboard wardrobe. He says here. Yeah, I'm looking at it too tan chinos or blue jeans presumably because a man like are you a chino he says here most men are either a chino guy or a denim guy or rarely mm-hmm. both to equal degrees i guess that's fair i actually do think i wear jeans more than chinos yeah but i wear trousers more than either of those things well i i, I think like i mean i wear um i also wear jeans more than more than chinos but that's also just because i have a lot of like khaki jackets and stuff like that. Yeah, you so don't, I don't. Well, I don't. But I, I, I actually like the I like the fake suit look. Yeah, you know? I, I like some contrast generally. Yeah, um, you, we got the navy sport coat, the gray wool trousers, an OCBD, Shetland sweaters, mm-hmm. the gray sweatshirt. Hey, there's me because I there's a part of three pairs there's of the shoes. shoes. The yep. shoes, which I still wear, those damn. Th- they do not look like that anymore, by the way. They I need to not. get. I need to get mine resold, like the oh, yeah. uh, or at least like the sole like stitch back up. We're referring to Chucka boots. That's what we're yeah. talking about, by the yeah, way. Yeah, sorry, you can't see what we're looking. <laughs> yeah, at. it's not a stream. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he says three casual jackets. Okay, so my issue with this, I mean, again, I it's it's meant to be a springboard thing. It's help it helps you experiment, find your style. Um. It is interesting going from very specific things like navy sport coat and then saying, oh, but like three casual jackets. And I guess it's like it's meant to be like, well, because you probably need a sport coat for like work. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like the casual jackets could be anything. Yeah, because I mean, what... there's so many there's so much variation in casual jackets. I think he's like, it's again, just kind of like a springboard. It's like, you know. Yeah, to, well, to I was going to say, of. how about navy jacket? Like, because some guys can just wear a navy like char coat as a blade. You know what I mean? That's like, true, that's yeah. how I would see it. Like, you know. I mean, we'll get into our own take on foundational wardrobe, but before we get over there, did you guys ever follow or have like a basic wardrobe? Did you guys ever, no. was that ever a part of your style? I Not feel like MJ kind of has that cause he's, he's, uh, he's younger, he's newer to this and, uh, you know, he didn't really have the whole vint like, you know, dressing in cosplay like we did. Yeah. So yeah, well, cause I was going to say just being into vintage, you don't have that opportunity because you just have to buy like whatever you whatever's can find. available yeah. yeah yeah so you can't you can't ever be like okay well here i am i'm gonna get like a bunch of blue ocbds or whatever like oh the, yeah the one, yeah we could talk about this for a little bit like yeah i one, remember the, the one time when i like i wanted i went to benny's with the intention of like i'm gonna buy a blue suit like i couldn't do that because he just didn't have one that i wanted in my size right. yeah yeah same like i mean when i would go to like paper moon vintage i'm like oh i heard i need khaki trousers okay uh-huh can't find them you know what i mean like there's just if they don't have them you know like what why would i why would i how how i mean it can't happen it can't and you know the whole like when i saw the white pant trend that you know on on like uh pity in back in like 2016 or or whatever i'd be like okay well i want like the 30s version of that which is like cream flannels it took Mm -hmm. a long time to find cream flannels because cream flannels were so rare especially in in that like by that perfect condition and so i just couldn't do it you know and I, I didn't want to do, uh, you know, I didn't want to do it through modern stuff because you can't mix and match, like, modern, like, H&M pants with... Uh, yeah, the silhouette just doesn't match. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, so, Spencer, you're the one, you actually wore vintage, like, a lot, like, all, mm-hmm. right? Like, you had, like, you had, like, the t-shirt and the jeans. Did you have anything basic with that? Like, did you think, okay, well, I need, like... I, I mean, I did have, like, you. my pants and shit like that. Like, there were a lot of things where I would compromise, where I would get just, like... I, I had the chinos that I wore from Spear and McKay for a while, or even before then, I would just have, like, <laughs> like chinos from, like, Target or Kohl's and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I would just, like, for a while, there would just be, like, st like I would I would have stuff from, like, yeah, to, like, like, Target or whatever that was as close to vintage as I can, as I could get for things like, just, like, like, OCBDs, like, my first ones for, from, like, H&M and places like that. Um, uh, like, some of my, like, plain white dress shirts or whatever were also, like, cheap mall brands. Um, but it was always, like, basic stuff like that because, like, yeah, it was, like, the, the very basics because I knew anything, like, cooler than that, like, the, the details would be off and I wouldn't really be happy. I mean, I wasn't, like, thrilled wearing the, you know, like, $5 polyester um, H&M shirts, but, you know, it's, it's like, it, it's, it's better to, I don't know, I felt better to wear that than, like, wear, like, you know, a fake vintage short jacket that was, like, too long and the collar was, was off and stuff like that, so, you know. Yeah. Well, see, for, for me, you know, I got into clothing mm -hmm. when I was into vintage, you know, so mm -hmm. when I went to, I, I, I'm sure that when I, right before college, when I didn't have to wear uniform anymore, I'm sure I did have like a little bit of like the basic wardrobe of like, you know, okay, I went to the mall, like I had to buy like, you know, sweatpants to like lounge around in the dorm, got to buy some chino shorts, got to buy some t-shirts, got to buy mm -hmm. some button ups. But as some of you guys may know, when I went to when I was in college as a freshman, I wore, like, the Hanes five-pack of V-neck shirts, like, the black, yeah. the gray, the white, with, like, the one pair of Gino shorts that I bought, and then flip-flops, you know, which is, like, what, you know, college. And then, so when I got into vintage, I think I applied my vintage mentality when I was buying, like, regular clothes, because, like, mm -hmm. I would shop sales at, like, J. Crew and H&M and Zara or whatever, so it was still, like, okay... I know I want a blue suit, but if this blue suit's not on sale, I'm not going to buy it, you know? And there's, it may look like I did have a basic wardrobe with some of my, you know, um, with some of my non-vintage outfits, but I think I just lucked out at the time of, like, whatever was available. And yeah. maybe that's just because, like, like, I remember, like, H&M once had a, had a, had a um, patch pocket navy blazer. And I oh, think it's because yeah. at the time, I, yeah, I wore that a lot. Um, but I, I, I think at the time it was just, like, it was honestly because no one wanted it, you know, no mm -hmm. one. So I was able to get that, like, you know, size 36 R, which, well, brother, I can't imagine that was 36 R, dude. I'm, I'm four above that now. Um, but, but yeah, like, I, I think I still apply the same mentality of like, well, if it's not available to you, you're just not going to buy it because I had like a very cheap, can I was a tutor and tutoring only happens if there's enough people to sign up. So like, I did not get enough money, you know, to constantly or to buy like the actual things. Yeah, so I just kind of had whatever I had. And then, like Spencer said, with, with Vintage, it was like, yeah, whatever's physically there, if you just yeah. have it. Like, okay, I want a blue stripe spear point. Well, I at the time, I'm like, I don't have the $70 to buy a custom shirt. And I didn't find Natty at the time. So I was like, okay, well, did I already own a blue stripe shirt? No. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I can't wear a blue stripe shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and I think even then with, like, Natty's shirts, like that first ever custom place that we did, um, that's like some of the fabrics aren't always available. I mean, that's this could mm -hmm. be the same thing with like bespoke nowadays, where it's like, well, you want this, like, oh no, the mill is out of that fabric. Okay, well, what the fuck are you supposed to do? Well, because especially with Natty, which I think their business pro model is probably a lot of like just buying fucking like, like leftovers, leftover you know? stuff. Yeah, and that's why like their fabric runs they last like you know three days before they get like before it lists is like sold out right. on the website. I mean, if, like, let's think about, like, like even, like, uh, on, on a similar note, like, like, fedoras or whatever, where, like, I think I had a silver belly before I even had a gray fedora, because mm -hmm. it's, like, that's just what was there. So I, like, just wore that with everything, yeah. you know? So I think, to, to hint that later with the foundational wardrobe, like, we've always had, like, the, like, the forced versatility of, like, well, you bought this, so you're gonna have to wear it with everything, uh -huh. and you're gonna have, you're gonna have to like it. Um, but MJ, what about you? Tell us about your basic stuff. Like, how did, did you follow the guides i mean you i mean yeah the answer is yes because yes yeah we were talking about it before um also like dan smith's yeah just this dan smith's this slim fit selvage denim um yeah when ethan was clearing out his closet at that time i benefited from a lot of those basics you know gray sweater um you know plain t-shirts stuff oh like i that. took that back i remember that i got back yeah. my gray sweater yeah, it's it's always funny not to cut you off, but like 
I think what I've been realizing is that I got my basics after I got started, you know? Right. Like, I remember when I first got my first Navy Odd jacket from Roxy, and that was, like, a big deal. Because I had... Yeah, I could split up stuff, but I kind of, like... It's kind of weird, like, when you are when you have, like, a heavy a heavy suit, and I actually got, like, a summer... Or what the 1940s would call summer weight. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I... Yeah, I got, like, a, a 1940s... Um, navy jacket and i was like wow this is the first time ever man and i remember also like i i I, uh i on ebay i got like 1940s like khaki chino uh, or cotton trousers with the hollywood Mm -hmm. waist and i was like oh man and that was already like i had already had a pinstripe suit i already had like a a brown Mm three-piece i had a belt back but i didn't have khaki so like even nowadays you know as as i got like later on into this like my first hop sack jacket was from suit supply but i had already had like a navy 1930s tweed jacket i had like you know all this other stuff and then like nowadays like what i i just got um I'm trying to think of, like what i what i got like later on oh yeah i finally got like a university well i got like a kamakura blue ocbd which i bought yeah. like in when i went to new york in 2018 mm-hmm. because i never had one before because I, w- I would try and thrift them but but yeah uh, sorry mj go back back to you so yeah, yeah. what <laughs> was i saying <laughs> Um, but I, I think I, yeah, you were trying it out. Yeah. I th- Benefiting from my old basics that I, that I also upgraded. Yeah. So it was kind of like, I, you know, I mean, it didn't all happen at once either. It, you know, it wasn't just suddenly I had a whole closet of, um, MFA version one through three or whatever it was at that time. Um, yeah. then I feel like I quickly grew out of it though. Um, mm-hmm because i don't know it was just yeah why why is that i think either you know i don't know if i like outright knew right away you know being friends with ethan and spencer and you know just looking at clothes more than just okay i'm i have my my two ocbds and two pairs of pants and two two pairs of shoes and i'm good um i continued to like look at different uh, you know different sources of inspo so that made me buy clothes that were outside of the like mfa realm yeah I you guess. realize that the basics just don't serve you aesthetically or or holistically yeah it was as well as other stuff yeah it was kind of just like more just like a a gateway or like a passing point um yeah springboard word yeah literally into like what i actually wanted to look for or, or dress like i guess it's just, um, I feel like it's a lot harder to, I mean, if, if you have, like, very specific tastes, or if, yeah, if you have, like, really specific tastes like we do, um, it's it's just harder to buy clothes, yeah. because yeah. you're not, you're gonna find less stuff that, like, appeals to you, and so that's always the crazy, like, obviously we're in, like, a completely different world, like, fashion-wise, than, like, the, like fashion TikTok people who post, like, like Shein hauls or whatever. But it is crazy to me when I see people who just buy these, like, massive volumes of clothes, like, all the time. Where it's, mm-hmm. like, I feel like my spending has definitely, like, slowed down. But even when I was buying the most, it was still, like, I don't know, probably under, like, 10 or 15 pieces per year. I'm trying yeah, I mean, to think. I, I, I don't think that that's true because I think we, we do find random stuff all the time. I, I, I guess yeah. that's true, but, but like, like it was, saying, it was never I don't like buy. A hall. It wasn't a haul. Yeah. It wasn't no, like all you once. never got a haul, yeah. and I never. It was never like a thing where I was getting something new like all the time. It's always like I feel like there's like a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Like I say, I agree with you, but I just different. have two new suits in the closet yeah. that just came. That's in. True. no, but yeah. like because like imagine being a brand ambassador for like a mall brand and then just getting like oh remember that guy the Aeropostale ad I got and the guy's like hey just signed up as a I'm I'm Aeropost I'm like first off. It exists still. I, I I feel like Aeropostales are constantly going out of business. It's like cotton on. You know what I mean? Mm. And number two, brother, like huh. Aeropostale, dude. Yeah. You don't need money that bad. You don't need it. Yeah. You don't. Um, you're not but, broke. <laughs> but what you're saying, MJ, about like, <laughs> about like, well, that's true, Spencer. That's a good point. You're not broke. And it's like, yeah. I think the thing with, with these wardrobes is that you think that your life sucks without it. Right. But it's like, no, you're... I at the bar, at the mall, at the Rose Bowl, wherever there are guys out there wearing a Pac-Man T-shirt, 
in shorts. Like they're That's they're true. fine. Like yeah, you're not yeah. you're not like you're you're not. Yeah, you might not be stylish, but that doesn't mean like you're like a fucking pariah for like being like for not being for not wearing like a a, a gray pocket tee with selvage jeans. You know, like like in fact, you're, to me, you're the same thing. <laughs> like yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I like, I like it more if they were fucking Mariah, Mariah Carey, Carey over here. Yeah, Hell yeah, brother. Hear me out. Actually, I don't think I don't think I don't think that that's uh you can't do that to say, somebody uh, that's conventional. That that's all already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like they have weird, to be right? weird. Yeah, they have to be so like weird. Uh, uh, Controver- kind of a controversial, kind of controversial opinion. Take. I think I think Ana de Armas is pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> hear me, Whoa. hear me out on this hey, one. Boys. Yeah. Hey boys, hear me out. Yeah. Well, I posted the the girl from um Elements? sorry Ember Lumen, yeah Ember Lumen from Elementals. Got a lot of comments like, brother, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, hear me out, brother. Uh, just be happy to put you in the house. Yeah. She's made of you fire. Can... Yeah, I'm sure they're going to kiss and they're going to turn into like smoke or whatever. They're going to turn they're into gonna... steam. They're both going to die. They're going to unalive each other. <laughs> um, oh, we're not on TikTok, MJ. Um, but, but yeah, so it's something I realized, I mean, that MJ kind of touched on is like the idea that we uh we do we do outgrow this stuff and i think something that i realized when i was looking at my like you know when i bought basics that i never wore basics like mm. i bought them like i i bought them after i got into everything and then i realized i still don't need them you know what i mean like yeah it's not a complete regret but i don't need white canvas sneakers yeah. hmm. like if i'm being really honest i i have to force myself well force in the, in the way of prompt myself to wear them cuz what I wear loafers all the fucking time. Yeah. You know, I have my casual LHS and then I have my like, you know, the tassels when I want to be dressy or whatever. And so it's like, you know, oh yeah, I should get like, I should get this gray pocket to you. You know what I wear it to? I wear it to fucking sleep. I don't uh-huh. even wear it out. You yeah. know, you know, I, I just, I just never really wore that stuff. Even, even now, like I, I have a Navy jacket and you know what I wear a lot? I either wear the Navy suit or a brown check jacket, but the navy sport coat is like I mean it's like basics kind of become like it's there just in case, you know? Yeah. And that's not to say that it's not important because I think again, like Smith just said, like we're crazy people. We started this in the we're craziest crazy. way possible. <laughs> we started this in the craziest way possible. Because yeah. if someone would ask like if MJ would ask me, well oh, Ethan, what should I buy? I would still tell him a, a navy sport coat or some kind of navy jacket. But let's let's talk now about like what we think is good. And I think it's called we call it the foundational wardrobe. Uh-huh. I don't think we coined that. No, uh, I'm sure someone else said Let's it in the Discord. It's just regular words, uh, also. So I think I think Marco said it. You know, I just watched Air, and there is a scene okay. where like um, they the guy uh, Michael Jordan's uh, agent uh, says something like, "I heard you guys do that new airline. Like, don't fucking talk to me unless you're gonna name it Air Jordan." You know, like he's like trying to get more money, right? Yeah. And then they're talking to the engineer, and the engineer's like, "Guys." I got it. We'll call it Air Jordan. And then and then they're like uh the agent said it. And they're like, "Oh fuck, really?" Like, "Okay, well we're going to lie. We're going to say that we made it anyway." And at the end of the movie, <laughs> it's all like they're like, "Yeah, like you know, like, they're all like simpatico, like, "Yeah, I can't believe it. Like, you know, you guys got to thank me for that." And they're like, "Oh, no, our engineer made it up." Like, "No, I no, he did. I did that. I made it fucking yeah. up." And so it's like, I'm sure that's like a little like a like a little urban myth about like who invented the name Air Jordan, but I think that's kind of I was kind of Is funny. that movie good? Is it fun? Uh, I would say it's fun. I'm not. Like, I'm not like a sports guy or like a shoe guy. Sport so I don't. You're but a I shoe think guy. It's, oh yeah. How about how about the movie? How about the movie about Shell Cordovan? Well, they, they could make a movie. They could probably make a movie about that Alden executive who is like embezzling a bunch of money. Well, how about they make that the invention be. of the tassel over? That's kind of a fun. Like because that's <laughs> is, like what didn't Alden say that they invented the tassel over? Did they? What yeah, what would this? That. What's the story behind it? Do you think like so the, like accidentally sew like a leather knot like it's just a bunch of s- <laughs> scraps? Yeah, I'm just tired. And it's like what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Wait a minute. Tassel. G- give me that shoe. <laughs> yeah. Is it formal? Is it casual? Who knows? Yeah. Um, and the answer is actually I'm more casual than you. We gotta write that. We gotta we gotta make that into a button. We gotta make um, that a button. But yeah, the foundational wardrobe. So I think it's you know important to look at this as like it is supposed to be basics in the sense of like you can wear this, you can wear this whenever. Uh, I do think there's an element of the springboard wardrobe, but not in terms of like aesthetically or sorry like 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 upgrades. It should be a springboard wardrobe that lets you like wear new things. Mm-hmm. But that like maybe a little bit more crazy, 
and I think that we're biased because this is a classic Windsor podcast, but this is obviously like, okay, well, you can't really wear like Levi's 501s with like Rick Owens Dark Shadow, like scoop neck tee that goes, you know. Yeah. But but there I is an element those, here of way. Yeah, I don't like the <laughs> that, that, that Rick Owens goth ninja thing is not my favorite aesthetic. Um but in terms of classic Windsor, I feel like there is a way to do this and one of the things that I think you, people have to do is that you just don't buy anything until you know exactly what you want to look like. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I say exactly as in terms of intentionality, not like this is the final form. Because, I, I mean, obviously, Spencer, Ethan, uh, Spencer, MJ, and I, we all change. Um, to be fair, my silhouette has gone back to what it was when I was wearing full vintage. So, that the, technically, yeah. you know, I already knew that. But, like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, have that idea in your head. I think determining the contour of your silhouette is like paramount for this. You know what I mean? Like, cause that will inform you what type of jacket, what type of jeans to buy. Mm-hmm. And because, I, I mean, think, that's the, that's yeah. the, the crazy thing. And we've talked about this before is like most people, that's like the last thing that they think about. Um, yeah. They is, just buy, is, they, they like, buy in name only, right? Like yeah. they buy, Oh, I need khaki. So they just buy like a, a J crew low rise one. And or, then they go, like the, Oh shit. It's like, or it's like, you know, alternatively, it could be like, you know, someone hearing like Slim Fit is good. And so then getting Slim Fit, despite the fact that it does not like look good on them, it does not flatter them. It's not comfortable. Um, yeah. But just because they just they think, oh, it needs to be slim for it to be good rather than it should look good on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The stuff in name only is so dumb because it's I mean, or mm. at least it's just super f- limiting because it's like. They, people should talk more about like the specific item it is, and I think at least Simon Crompton in his capsule wardrobe he does mention like, oh, your navy jacket should be soft shouldered, you know, patch pockets that way you can still wear it. Like it'll be smart but also casual at the same time, mm-hmm. as opposed to like you know buying like a super English structured navy blazer, which can work for people if like if that's what your aesthetic is. But like, at least prescribing based on based on like silhouette is kind of important, you know, like yeah. like I think like oh, you know, everyone should have a loafer. Well, maybe not a high vamp one because that might mm. that might look too sharp and formal maybe like a, an lhs will be more casual and also be more versatile for you but that's mm. not what we're talking about we're like determining like the aesthetics of the things that, that you want or that you want to look like is is really just paramount because it's like i think spencer we all wear basics uh, arguably yeah. i mean i, I know i just said no, it was I, rough i I'll... All my stuff, it's like I I wear so many basics because <laughs> it's like all my outfits are like jeans and then like blue shirts and shit like that. You know, it's yeah. like very I don't know. If you if you took if you just took uh, if you made a vector image of my wardrobe <laughs> without a lot of detail, it could look like a, a basic bastard um, like diagram or something. Yeah, mine can't. Um, mm-hmm. But <laughs> even though I do, even though I do have basics, like they're all in like the way that I want them to look. Like I have khaki shorts. But they're Gurkhas, you know what I mean? Like there's, they're, up, they're, they're like upgraded they're, basics. Yeah, I mean, but not just upgraded. Like they have a very intentional aesthetic that they have that lets me like, when I'm casual, I look like that, you know? Like I look mm-hmm. like, like a 1940s Esquire man illustration. I mean, I always look like that. <laughs> but excuse me, uh, take a shot. Um, but you know, like the Gurkha shorts are very intentional. Then I can also wear Gurkha shorts with like a sport coat, you know, which mm-hmm. is like a fun because it because. I think that like a, su- a super slim fit, uh, above the knee short does not look good with with a with a blazer, but a yeah. Gurkha short, which is like basically a pair of trousers that you just cut off, you know, because they're so wide, kind of makes sense, you know, or that's like why my my loafers go with everything because of like the aesthetic, you know. So like the foundational wardrobe, at its core, just means that there is a consistent silhouette, or you know, mm. and whatever that means. Ours is wide; yours could be slim if that's what it is. But like hammering down what your basic contour is, like what's like what your vector image of your body of what you look like, whether it's casual or formal, like nailing that down is the first step. Yeah. Uh, number two, I think it's important to to think about like, okay, what does your actual character look like? You know, like what does what does your person, your character, who you are, what do they wear on a daily basis? You know, is there is there a suit involved? Is it is there a casual? Is there is there like gorp stuff involved? You know, and like and and you and since you already have the POV of like your aesthetic, 
you know, of your silhouette, now you can do the POV of like the formality levels next, you mm-hmm. know? Because like if, if you like really wide fits across everything, then presumably your suit would be a, a, a classic fit. Your your you know, your shorts might be classic, your you know, um or like or if you're like Spencer, right? Like if you if you're you know, if you have like a nineteen sixties rugged Americana aesthetic, you know, like your your chinos will look like that, your trousers will probably fall the same way, and then you know, your your jackets will be in the similar vein. You know? Mm-hmm. Just like with me, right? Like my casual jackets are like short jackets you know like they, they're cut for high-waisted pants all of them right my lee 101 j's my like boy scout jacket you know my gabardine short jackets like they all have they're all in that that, that aesthetic um so like finding out the formality part of it and and like your daily life stuff is the next stage yeah and then after that is like you know <laughs> what do you Just call it like, like fabrics i mean yeah i yeah. mean with, with this is like like i feel like the springboard wardrobe is like meant to like you know okay if you have like a classic jacket or like a classic trouser then you can add in a funky tie mm-hmm. but i think that you should already have like the funky stuff in your head and i don't even think that our funky stuff is inherently that funky like my kimono jacket might seem crazy mm-hmm. but i find it so easy to wear yeah you know like i don't well, it doesn't it's feel like, like it's, it's, yeah it's not funky and like there's a lot of people online and again not to be too mean but people who are like have like really like oh i'm so quirky like type fashion there's there's like a sub like uh, there's like um there's 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 like a subsect of those people who they get like the cheapest shit that they can find with just like a crazy pattern printed on it and it always looks bad because like you can like you know you can like smell the fucking petroleum or whatever that was <laughs> that was made of um like there's like loose screws and stuff like that for the machines that were stamping them out loose screws loose um, you, you got your screws loose and like it is very like noticeable and loud and stuff like that but again it doesn't like l- look like good or flattering or like put together um and I think the stuff that we wear, it's it's more out there in terms of construction and design and stuff like that, um, and not so much in just, like, you know, having a big, bold, loud pattern. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's... It's also, like, that, that thing of what you said earlier about, like, being emotionally connected to your clothes. Sometimes, like, the mm-hmm. emotional... Maybe the, the wild part is that it's not something that most people would technically enjoy, but you do, so, you know, you, you make it happen. Yeah, because like I mean, there's the other like... thing is, like, in terms of the emotional connection, I feel like a lot of the Reddit, like, STEM types who are trying to turn, like, fashion into an algorithm might, like, dislike that because they're like, no, I don't want to be, like, it's like, that's, you know, like, they, they don't want to, they don't want to let emotion get into this. It's like, <laughs> no, I just want to think about objectively what is good and stylish. I don't need to, I, not, I don't need to sully this with feelings yeah, I don't, I mean, that's, that's kind of like the whole thing here. It's like, you know, if you yeah. if you start out with the emotions, and I think kind of what we said in the expressive essay, or, or episode, like that, that caught, like, you know, details are aesthetic emotions in a sense, like they make, they, they, they make you feel excited to wear this thing, you know, for me, like the kimono has like this drama to it that I just, when I see it, I get so inspired, so I wear it, you know, I make it, I make it work with whatever I'm wearing, because mm-hmm. it's, it's the focal point. It's the main reason I decided to get dressed for that day. Same thing with a suit or same thing with a, a tie or whatever. And so starting with that emotion part, you know, is is so key. Because I think it does take the guess. That takes the guesswork out of everything else. Like, once you know yeah. what you like, it's like, I don't have to, like, think really hard. Like, I, you know, it's not an... Getting dressed is not some esoteric, you know, mystical thing that, that, that only only a few chosen can can or a chosen few can actually do right like it's just mm-hmm. once you tap into that like this is why i believe like anyone can compose music but you should it starts off with being really aware of what you want it to sound like you know yeah. like i it's weird like when you're when you're writing like i don't i don't this is just coming from a hobbyist perspective but it's like oh you want to be a composer okay well now you gotta you gotta learn how to write a western you gotta learn how to write a bond score and you gotta learn how to write star wars i feel like it doesn't really work you know, yeah. and especially nowadays where composers are kind of picked not for their versatility, but for their very specific sound that they do, you know, just just like directors nowadays, right? Like, you know, or like Wes Anderson or, or whatever, 
um, I guess Wes Anderson, he doesn't really, they don't hire him to do a movie like you, he does his own movies, but like yeah. that idea, I mean, you, you go to a restaurant, like a, a good restaurant is someone who does something really well. You don't go, okay, well they do everything. Like, you know, you're not going to go to hometown buffet. Well, no, yeah, you want someone, everything. I don't know. It's, it's nice when there's someone that you, like specializes in something, I guess that has like something it's like, okay, this is, it's, it's like, yeah, going to like yeah a rest like you know something like cheesecake factory which has like a million pages on their menu or something versus a restaurant that is known for one particular dish or something um yeah or that you know like a, pl- some, a place that has like a prefix menu i guess i'm not trying to be like oh it has to be like expensive and fancy to be good but um, and i guess that kind of depends too right because like, yeah. it's like it's also like if I was planning like a, a dinner, I would make with friends. Maybe a cheesecake factory does make sense, but like that's not a personal thing, right? Like you're there mm-hmm. to like satisfy there a because... bunch of people. Yeah. Versus like, well, if I want like if I really want ramen, I'm not gonna go to cheesecake factory because mm-hmm. I want ramen. You know, like that's that's what it is. And I mean, that's yeah. the other thing is like th- this is also maybe. <laughs> Like, I, I, th- I see this a lot in, like, geek culture or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we, we talk about cosplayers so much on this show. Um, or, like, people are. who, like, see something that, like, a cool jacket or something in, like, a, a pop culture video game or something. And they're like, oh, I want a copy of that. And then they, or, like, or not even, like, pop culture. Like, they'll see something in, like, a fashion ad or something. And it's like, okay, how do I get this? And then they find, like, the cheapest, like, shittiest knockoff, like, version of it that they can find. And it doesn't like look or or anything like it, mm-hmm. and yeah. like there are a lot of people who are like satisfied by that. But I've never been like that. Like you know, even when I even, like when I was first getting into it, like I said, like I did even before I knew as much as I know now about like vintage stuff. If there was something that I can tell was like off in the design or something uh, that w- just wasn't what I was looking for, I wouldn't want to wear it. Like I would just keep thinking about that like thing. Mm-hmm. While I was yeah. wearing it, even if I'm the only one that notices what's wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a, it's all about the intentionality aspect of mm-hmm. it, you know. And again, that's not to say that basics, that you know, foundation can't be there. It's just that it this thing informs your 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 basics, you know. I think yeah. again, like even though I don't wear them, my khaki shorts, my sneakers, my t-shirts are all have like this a very specific aesthetic that. That means when I when I do get to them, I I can wear them. Quite actually, you know, for me, it, the basic aspect is is the is the hardest. Like I don't really wear basics that much, mm-hmm. you know. But if you guys had to, what would be like your foundational wardrobe, and why do you think it's foundational? Like, what's your thought process there? Um, I mean, I think in terms of like silhouette, I I think uh, I, I'm starting to move away from like the just kind of like looser more like i don't know like flowy shapeless stuff like i don't really like the like big like boxy like wide jackets or anything um i'm starting to like in almost everything i prefer to have that kind of like classic like like 30s to like 50s uh silhouette with kind of like broader like shoulders like a more narrow waist and then like long like wide legs like i like something with structure in it and I, I, I feel like I can kind of achieve that with, like, you know, like, in casual... Like, I've been wearing sport coats casually more often, but even with casual stuff, I feel like I can achieve that with, uh, like, yeah, short jackets that end right at the waist, um, or with, like, you know, like, kind of, like, longer military jackets or, like, work jackets that can kind of, like, like mimic the proportions of a sport coat. Um, yeah. Uh, I know we talked about how we don't like this, but I, if I wanted to, I could honestly probably get dressed in the dark. <laughs> I don't, um, but all my stuff does kind of just go with each other. Like every time I look in my closet, I'm like, wow, everything's like three colors. It's all like l- light blues or br- browns and like other like like earth tones and like shades of cra- like khaki or green, and that's basically it. Yeah. Um, but I will say, even though I could get dressed in the dark if i wanted to i do dress more intentionally um in and i think we're, we'll talk about this more in an upcoming episode about jewelry but i do kind of feel like things like uh p- put putting on the same like watch and like bracelet and necklace and everything every day that also i think kind of like grounds my style a little bit more mm. um and just gives me some like give like you know i don't like wearing the same things every day but having a couple pieces that are like okay this is the same i'm like st- i'm always wearing these 
like, you know, this is going to be kind of a constant in my style. So how do I like build around like these pieces in like a way that kind of blends together? Right. Yeah. What about you, MJ? What would your foundational... Well, so wait, hold on, Spencer. What, so what's your list of foundational... Oh, okay. like list of foundational items. I would say probably, like, the teenaged jeans. I, I wear those all the time. I love those because they have, like, the nice high waist. Uh, I really like the... It's like a heavier denim, um, which I think drapes really well. Uh, it's, like, the perfect width. It's the perfect length. I love those things, and I'm going to need to get the knee patched up pretty soon probably because i can start to i can i can see it starting to fray or like starting to uh get thinner on the knee uh which makes me worried <laughs> but uh probably those ja in terms of jackets i'm i might just if 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 we were going with the scenario of my house burned down and i can only save a couple things <laughs> it would probably would be like my blue like brass button like blazer yeah. Um, cause I feel like that's just something I could like wear with anything. Um, I would, I would definitely, I would probably do like the, the jacket that I'm wearing now, like the HBT chore coat, um, or something like that. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know, like a, le like a leather jacket, like is my casual thing. And then for shirts, it would probably just be like, sh like chambray work shirts or a Western shirt or something. Like yeah. I said, all my, all my shirts are like light blue. <laughs> Um, so yeah, then just, okay. I don't know, penny loafers as the shoes. I wear those, I wear those all the time. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. all of that sounds like they'll, they'll get you by to whatever, mm -hmm. whatever your life requires of you. I mean, again, like I said, it doesn't really matter because you could wear anything anywhere. You yeah. Know? All at once. Like, again, there are people who wear a t-shirt and hoodie to work and it's totally mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. They are engineers. They are office guys you know uh, mj what about you um it would probably be a lot of functional stuff lots of um i mean i, I own them that that's what i'm saying because I, I wear them a lot but um jungle jackets and chore coats would probably be like my my outerwear um i wear military pants and like jeans and wide fit stuff a lot mm -hmm. too um like the easy like easy pants i guess yeah um and then i don't know for shirts it's kind of like i i mean i still wear like uniqlo airism and stuff like that um and i guess turtlenecks when it's cold so probably that sort yeah. of stuff um I don't know if I would say collared shirts because I actually don't wear them as often, like just like, like, you know, like on a daily basis. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if blasphemy. I don't know if it's fair to say that I would put them in like my foundational, even though I like wearing them, obviously, you know, I wouldn't own them if I didn't like them. But yeah. if it was like boiled down to things that I wear regularly, you know, it would be it wouldn't be collared shirts, I guess. Mm. Maybe polos and rugby's, but not like button ups. You know. Okay. So for me, I want to make this. I want to do some bold claims here. So I think well, I've always said that I can wear whatever I want. Uh -huh. um, I, I can wear anything that I'm interested in. It just makes sense. Like the kimono thing kind of mm. made sense. Drawstring trousers made sense. And I think it's because, like I said, for me, the foundational wardrobe is based on silhouette rather than specific pieces and like formality or whatever. It's just that. It, like the base is slouchy, right? And then like the my chosen method of expressing slouch is through classic menswear or Americana and maybe just a tiny bit of like minimal designer clothing like like with you know again like like the wide leg drawstring pants, the kimono yeah. style jackets, staff and core, etc. Um so with that, I'm going to say my foundational wardrobe is going to be even vague. So I'm going to say that for me <laughs> For my for the, like the Sashi wardrobe is a big coat, whatever that is. Whoa. Some, okay. Like it could be, and that could be up to you, right? It could be a Balmacan, could be a, a polo coat, could be a whatever kimono style, big coat, you know, big uh, coat. slouchy sport coat, any co whatever color you want. If it, navy mm. makes the most sense for most people, you can do gray if you want. Brown would probably be my. 
number one pick. Um, I think a dark suit again could be brown, could be could be charcoal gray, could be blue. Uh, some kind of loafer could be a Belgian, could be a tassel, could, could be, be a penny. Yeah. Penny loafer could be a, a slipper, you know. Um, handful of knitwear. That t-shirt's kind of a knitwear because it's a yeah knit, woven, I guess you know. Uh, crew neck, turtlenecks, whatever. Chunky fits, fine. High waisted big pants. Drawstring, just pleated, whatever you everything. want. Military chino. Yeah. Uh, but I will say a a, a, a reverse blue stripe shirt is a kind <sighs> of an essential because. And in a spear point collar, because then you could wear it, you know, as 70s without a collar bar. You could wear it with a collar bar, you know. That's right. Um, chambray. I guess a chambray shirt. But that's, I guess the idea is that the shirt has to be big fit, has to have a pocket, and has to have a long collar. Yeah. And that's my foundational wardrobe. And okay. you could interpret that however you want. You could dress it up if you want. You could dress it down. You could do like a designer suit, you know. I think Yoji makes some suits. You know, you could do all of that. And I feel like you would get the same vibe that I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. I just I just intentionally pick, you know, uh, ties and shit whenever I do it. And then, of course, you know, there's other stuff, too, that's, like, more fun. Like, I wear sweater vests, you know, which I, are, aren't necessary, but I do because I like it. Neckties aren't necessary either. Mm-hmm. Um, and the short jackets, too. Like, these are those are my ways of, like, branching out. But foundationally, I feel like it's just big fits big shorts big jackets big trousers mm. big shirts you know, tucked in obviously <laughs> but like that's how i see the foundation wardrobe and i feel like because of that i'm able to again experiment and do other stuff that most people would never really do you know i think yeah. a lot of people go like oh i want to get into you know i guess people try and do 30s tailoring and the, but then they're like oh no everything is too slim you know what i mean like Like, I think that for some reason, a big wardrobe, maybe it's because fashion inherently is, like, all about big fits. Like, I feel like there's something, like, that feels, not avant-garde, but that feels, like, ooh, interesting when it's big. Because it's, like, that. it's easier to have, like, yeah, like, a unique uh, silhouette and construction with a wide fit than it is with a slim fit. Mm -hmm. Just because if it's a slim fit, it's just going to be following the contours of your body rather than creating new contours. Yeah, exactly. Or or no contour because it's just yeah, it's, it's just balloon shape. Yeah. yeah, but I think yeah, but li- I think luckily that that's you know that's what makes my wardrobe the springboard wardrobe kind of at least for me like I was able to kind of jump into other stuff with ease, mm-hmm. and everything else that might be a little bit too pointed kind of just makes sense mm-hmm. because I make it make sense. You know, like I still make wear, it like, make sense. Like. I think so. I think my maybe my trousers are a little bit too straight cut or wide for cowboy boots, but I still do it anyway because I like the cowboy boots, you know. Mm. Like yeah, obviously a flare, and I do have some flares, you know. But what I think is, is happening is I don't really have anything that's too, I guess that's slim or just agnostic or that's too modern. Um, so the foundational wardrobe that I have is is kind of yeah, it's it's very fashion forward in a sense. And that makes it just really easy to, to incorporate stuff. And it's also really easy to go minimal, too, because it's just, I could be minimal, but still be interesting, you know? I can yeah. still, I can I still, can have still it. be interesting. I'm you not know, a I don't, boring fella. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really have an outfit that's just the plainest of the plain. Although... <laughs> you don't have a plain Jane. I did dress in basic bastard. I mean, maybe it's like tech bro, because... Yeah. So uh, yesterday after work, I debated on going to one of the inspiration parties, but I was like, you know what? I don't know anyone there, and I'm I don't I don't really care enough to go anymore. <laughs> um, so I changed. I, I I had tickets to watch Air, mm-hmm. but I I want to relax a bit beforehand, so I changed out of my corduroy suit and black polo shirt, and I put on a gray T-shirt, mm-hmm. my slim selvage jeans from three sixteen that I wear as like knockabout jeans, a blue. <laughs> zip hoodie yeah <laughs> and blue canvas sneakers i looked like mark zuckerberg if he was like slightly into mfa that's funny yeah and that was kind of like man if this was like my regular wardrobe i would find it so hard to like try anything else because like the jeans are too slim to like wear to be too slouchy mm-hmm. you know the hoodie is like it doesn't give the same expressive features as other stuff yeah you know and so I think a true foundational wardrobe is one that is both expressive of, of what you want, but also 
able to have other stuff expressed through it. And I think though some of the issues with like a true basic wardrobe that is overly prescriptive of like, you know, this khaki from like J. Crew or whatever is that the expressive choices that it makes are limiting versus yeah. being able to be worn with other stuff. And so I mean it's not to say that our our advice I mean we we never really said that people should have a basic wardrobe because we we never really you and I never really started with that. We started with buy that thing that you know you like and be very intentional about it and then you'll you'll wear it. You know, you can like in some ways, Spencer, we are that guy who buys like that anime jacket, but we just <laughs> are a little bit more aware of how to wear it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Or, you know, because um, we are buying stuff that most people would maybe not mm-hmm. buy as like their first choice, but we kind of did it because we found it and uh, we stuck with it instead of like giving mm-hmm. it up, which is really. And you knew, and you guys knew you liked it because you liked it versus, hey, some guy on Reddit told me to <laughs> told me that it's cool. You kind of, yeah. You kind of, well, you were also, you know, it's safe to say that you were removed from that sort of thing in the first place. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, that's kind of the key here. I mean, if you start out with that, and I don't think anyone listening to this, or or honestly, people that we know, are looking for their basic wardrobe. But like, if you are, I would say again, the first thing to do is kind of determine that contour, the expressiveness, and then, and then yeah, go from there. Yeah, what you want to look like. Figure, yeah, figure out what you want to look like. Figure, you know, what is that character? What does that character wear? Like Spencer, Spencer's outfit, Spencer and MJ's outfits are more basic compared to mine, but that's because that's what they want to look like. There, there's, there's, there's less pieces involved. But for me, it's yeah. like, I want to look like '60s, you know, Mad Men, but I also want to look like '30s this, and I also want to look like '70s that. So I, I guess for me, I do have a little bit of outfit personality disorder. <laughs> but like, but like, I, it's, it's, it's more like I get the, it's like split. You know, mm. I get to oh, pick okay. between who I want to. I guess in Split, he doesn't he have. He doesn't get to pick. Yeah, I guess no. <laughs> I'm more like the, the chameleon, beast? like yeah. like in Spider Man who gets to like to turn or into you other could be people. Like Randall. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a yeah yeah Randall Boggs. Randall I love, Boggs. I love the last names in, in the names all all the names in that in that movie. James P. Incredible. Sullivan, George yeah. Sanderson, Mike Wazowski. Perfect, it's, just regular guy names. But there is Mrs. Bile, which does seem like a like a like a real monster like a name. evil name. Yeah. Or Henry J. Waternoose. Waternoose does sound like a like a scary name. It scares me when I hear it. Because I'm scared of both of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, water. Oh, no. Nooses. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's you know if you had to really decide. And, it, and it, you know, for us, if we had a fire, I would just buy the same things I already had. Like I would just, I wouldn't. I know, I I, I know that I'd be fine with just the t-shirt and jeans, but the basic wardrobe to me is functional. It is not if meant we, to if... be like a hobby. And maybe that's just why. Maybe that's why we were so resistant to it. You know, like this is for guys who like. I don't believe that a basic wardrobe is for fashion. I believe a basic wardrobe is to be clothed. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, if you want it's to like be... It's like a functional in, thing. Yeah, if you want to be into... Like, if you said, okay, what should I start out with that helps me get further into fashion? You have to start off with, like, silhouette and aesthetics you and formality. Like. and Yeah. But if, you're, if your thing is, hey, I don't know what I, I want to fucking wear because I need to not think about that when I wake up. Yeah. Then, yeah, this is for you. <laughs> the basic ward, the basic bastard, the capsule wardrobe to get dressed in the dark. But I don't get dressed in the dark. I don't even put shuffle. I mean, I know I have shuffle on <laughs> on my thing, but I the first the first song I pick when I get into the car is always an intentional choice. I get into my car and I go, I feel like listening to the theme from Quantum Mania, or I'm gonna listen to this concerto. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had to start off with with Ant Man. Um, <laughs> he has to. Or yeah, same thing. You like really I don't make an to. outfit. I don't. I don't go. Oh, it's it's Monday. I gotta. Dude, my outfit's already made because gotta I already I made it. <laughs> I already chose. I already chose my inspiration outfit. I already chose my, my, my outfit for Sunday. This is why the backlog happens because it comes from a place of, I know exactly. I, I like this, you know, like I'm sure if Spencer, if you guys sat down, you guys can make a backlog of outfits because you'd be like, yeah. I want to wear this. I want to wear this, you know? So it's hard to turn that into a basic wardrobe, but I think like we, like the steps that we said help make it kind of possible. 
I, I and then you guys was, can find out what your a, own version of that. If there was a fire that destroyed my entire wardrobe, I would just uh, stay in the fire. <laughs> I would jump into. <laughs> yeah, the I mean, closet. I can't. Yeah. I apparently there's a there, there's an episode about like you know the clueless closet or whatever. Um, but in mm-hmm. that thing, they do say like there is an app that you can like put in how much your clothes cost. And then, like, you can see how much your your closet is worth. Yeah. And the good thing, though, from that episode, it's it's from um, Articles of Interest, is that the issue with those apps is that it it, kind of tells you that for people who have those apps of, like, you know, digitizing your closet and, like, Mm -hmm. putting it on a shuffle, it makes people actually buy clothes less, which is a good thing. Because people people are more aware of what they have. Mm. I guess that does make sense. Uh, I don't want to know... How much the clothes behind me cost? No, neither do I. I don't like thinking about it. Because if I think about how much shell cordovan I have, how much my custom suits are, uh, That's, then you're gonna start a fire intentionally. No, I'm. I'm gonna never. I'm gonna never have anything even close to these clothes. Yeah, you know, I don't want them to die. Um, yeah, that was our thoughts on this. It's not really prescriptive. This is just a, a general rant. It's and, kind of a and ramble. A ramble We're about kind of like rambling war, through the brambles. That's, that's what the shot podcast should be called. Yeah. <laughs> rambling through the brambles. Hey, everybody. <laughs> the rural juror. Welcome back. The rural juror. We're the br- bramble ramblers. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I do want to finish off by saying, like, I think what, what we said earlier about being emotionally connected to your clothes is super important because I think if we find out. If you really dig deep on your emotions and how you connect with things, I think and you'll I find, yeah, I think you'll find that the, the you know what to buy next and how to combine things starts to make sense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like how I'm never at a loss of what to watch on TV because I know like what I'm, I'm I'm so connected with myself. Like I want to laugh, so I know that I'm gonna watch this this funny show or I'm gonna watch. You're gonna watch you know, Young Sheldon, or you're gonna <laughs> put on Gutfield hell's that what the greg gutfield i don't know what that is no he's a fox guy oh okay yeah he's their john stewart but he's not he he, he's he's not funny he doesn't know how to make oh sorry i thought you're talking about like a fox guy oh okay what does the well what does the fox say whatever i don't bloop bloop (laughs) bloop bloop um smash bros probably that like yeah. I, I don't know, like live an intentional life and then you know build your stuff based on that. You know, like I, when I go to bookstores, I don't just wander. I feel like I go to a specific section yeah. and I know what I'm gonna buy. You know what and I mean? Like I don't. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like it's like it's like what we say. Like you don't go to a grocery store and go, okay, what do I feel like making for food this week? Let's just see what the grocery store has to offer me. Oh, I like you know? how you brought that up because so I thought about this when we back when we, at the beginning when we said about like getting dressed in the dark. It's yeah. like. Which I'll never do. It's like it's like having soup I want soup everywhere. all the time. Well, what happens right? if you just buy the well, stuff that you know goes together and then just you just throw it in a pot? Yeah, you make a then, broth with yeah, it. Yeah, and that's just, all you yeah. eat forever. An eternal stew. <laughs> well, it's like something I realized about that too, is that if I was gonna meal prep, I'd at least know what I'm, what I'm gonna eat. Like I'd be okay because you can meal prep a lot of stuff. Like like uh-huh. lots of meals can, are meal meal preppable, but you gotta decide what that is. And, like, honestly, chicken and rice, yeah, you can, like, do variations of that. You know what I mean? Like, you can do, like, rotisserie chicken or you can do fried chicken, I guess, you know? <laughs> so many chickens. But, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know like, what the overall point is with this episode, but it's, like, if the foundation is that it should it should be the foundation is emotional connection and intent. And mm-hmm. doing that is the way to go. And it should not be based on specific items because everyone's contexts are different mm-hmm. everyone could benefit from because like spencer spencer doesn't need to wear a tie all the time he doesn't wear a tie and it's I fine don't. yeah i don't think he has gray flannels actually you do i do oh well i guess okay i guess if you, you really say, thought oh, about well yeah well i guess okay. if you really thought about it we do own basics and i think that's the kind of thing well the idea with classic menswear is that you'll probably be safe in every situation <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the yeah, good a lot thing of classic menswear us. stuff is "quote unquote" basics. Like it, it that's we, true. We, we own basics, but we don't wear like the basic bastard uniform. Mm. Yeah, I do wear a Breton striped tee and chino shorts. It's just, I mean, I think every wardrobe is going to have 
every wardrobe is going to have some quote unquote basics. Like, you, I don't know, like maybe some people uh, don't, but I, I feel like everything is, you're going to, you're not every piece could be like the standout piece. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's fun to find out what those are. And mm. I, I don't really know what mine, I mean, I guess I know what mine is. It's like I said, it's just slouchy, big stuff in, in yeah. dark colors. Uh, and the fun comes out with ties and outerwear and stuff like that. But the scarves. Yeah, yeah scarves. Yeah. Find out what How that is scars? for you. And and that's it. You know, foundational wardrobes. Yeah, that's connect it, with your clothes. Uh, but So if you guys want to discuss more with us, uh, you can uh, by joining our Discord. You also get... Mm-hmm. You also, we also do bonus episodes every month where we talk about movies or personal trips or whatever, like Spencer's trip. Uh, to, to New York City. New York. Uh, to get access to all that, you go to patreon.com slash style and direction. Get the access to all of those things. Discord and bonus episodes. Ten dollars is the same Ten thing. Ten dollars. But we get to thank you personally. MJ, who are we thanking? We are thanking our sidecast fanatics, Alexander Batten, Austin Malott, Henrik Wilberg, Jerk Colian, Philip Grigard, and Shane Curry. That's right. Oh, yeah, Nick Wooster. He's not Nick w. in the ten dollar tier anymore. Oh, he's not. Okay. Ah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Nick. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can follow me at Ethan M Wong. I'm at Spencer DSO. I'm at Aya MJ. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Welcome back, by the way. This is our first episode back from the break. Ooh, oh, that's right. Enjoy back it. Back from the break. Got more episodes for you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.